Since its original release way back in 2010, Apple has slowly but consistently added extra features to its ebook reader app. So much so that these days, personally, I think it's on par, if not better, than Kindle and Audible for reading and listening to your books. So if you're curious to see what Apple Books has to offer, here are 10 tips and features to get you started. Time tags are listed below if you wish to skip ahead, so let's get into it. And first up, if you're keen to give Apple Books a try but don't want to spend money upfront buying books, then you don't have to. There are a ton of free books and audiobooks for you to get stuck into. Simply open the bookstore from the menu, select Browse Sections, and tap on Free. At the top, you have the most recent free books added to the store. Below that, you have a collection of free audiobooks, and if you scroll all the way down to the bottom of the page, you can browse by your favorite genre. There are options here to suit all ages and most interests. I'm currently listening to The 39 Steps by John Buchan. When I'm finished, if I click on this menu and choose View in Store, it will take me to other free audiobooks that I might be interested in. Of course, you don't need to get your books through the Apple Bookstore. If you buy your books elsewhere in the EPUB format, then you can easily add them to your library simply by dragging and dropping the file onto the Books app if you're on a Mac. Here, for example, is a travel guide that I recently purchased through the Lonely Planet. Or alternatively, if you're on an iPad or iPhone and have the EPUB, or in this case, a PDF file saved somewhere, long press on the file to bring up the Quick Actions menu, choose Share and select the Books app to import it into your library. One of the things I love about Apple Books is how seamlessly my books sync across all my devices. I can listen to an audiobook on my iPad, switch over to my iPhone, and continue exactly where I left off. I sat down on the very crest of the pass and took stock of my position. It's the same regardless of whatever device you're using, whether that be your Mac laptop or if you're in the car listening through CarPlay. All your books are getting synced seamlessly using iCloud. To ensure that this works correctly, on your Mac you need to open the Settings app, click on your Apple ID, choose iCloud, followed by iCloud Drive. Here you want to choose Options and make sure that the Books app is ticked. If you wish to sync your PDFs as well as your books, I think you also need to turn on iCloud Drive, and I'll show you why in just a second. You'll also want to check that you're actually signed in to your account in the Books app, which you can do here. On iPhone and iPad, open Settings. Again, select your Apple ID, choose iCloud, followed by Show All. You want to make sure that the Books app is enabled. You then want to scroll down to the Individual Books app settings and make sure that these two options are also both enabled. And here is where Apple explains that iCloud Drive is required to sync PDFs that you add to your library. Syncing audiobooks across your Apple devices also extends to your Apple Watch. If you own an Apple Watch that connects to cellular networks, you should be able to automatically see the audiobooks in your library. Otherwise, you'll need to open the Apple Watch app on your iPhone, select audiobooks from the menu, and here you have a few options. You can choose to have the current book you're listening to download automatically to your watch, as well as any audiobooks you have tagged as want to read. Or alternatively, you can just manually download audiobooks from your library using this option. Just note that I think your watch has to be charging for the download to start. If you prefer to listen to books rather than read them, you can also have your Apple device read any book in your library. It requires the use of Apple's accessibility options. It's not perfect and the voice is a little robotic. But essentially, all you do is open the book you wish to listen to, click on Edit, and choose Speech, followed by Start Speaking. The Adventure of the Speckled Band. On glancing over my notes of the And when you've had cases, enough, click on the same menu item again life. to stop speaking. This feature can be customized by opening Settings, clicking on Accessibility, and selecting Spoken Content. Here you have options to increase and decrease the speed of the speaker, the volume, as well as changing the actual voice that you hear. 
I recommend clicking on Manage Voices and downloading the premium option, which definitely helps the speaker to sound more human and less like a robot. You can do the same on iPhone and iPad. Open Settings, find Accessibility, followed by Spoken Content, and here you want to enable Speak Screen. As the tooltip reads, you activate the feature by swiping down with two fingers from the top of your screen. As on Mac, click on Voices to select the speaker and download the premium content packs. Now back in Books, swipe down with two fingers to start listening. And yet there was but one woman to him, and that woman was the late Irene Adler, of dubious and questionable memory. As you would expect from a modern e-reader app, there are numerous ways you can customize the format of your books and how they present on screen. You can access these options by tapping the middle of the screen to bring up the menu icon. If we quickly switch over to the Settings app, you can set whether you wish the menu icon to appear on the left or the right hand side of your screen. Having tapped on the menu, you have options to display the chapters of your book, search the book for specific words, add a bookmark to refer to later, or share the title of your book with others. However, to customize the layout, we want to choose Themes and Settings. Here you can quickly and easily increase or decrease the font size, choose a theme which will affect the font type, text spacing, and the background color, and we can switch between day and night modes. This little button here will also allow you to toggle between reading by continuously scrolling or by tapping left and right to change pages. Tapping on options, however, brings up even more formatting changes. Now you can set a font and change the character, word, and line spacing to suit your needs. You can also set whether you wish the text to justify across the page, and if your book supports it, you can view text in columns. Sadly, these formatting options don't extend to PDFs. However, if you own an iPad and an Apple Pencil, you can use the same markup tools that you'll be familiar with in other apps. You can highlight, underline, add arrows and stars to your documents, as well as making notes. This comes in very handy if you're using the app to read textbooks for school or university. And on the subject of schools and universities, many of the books available from the Apple Bookstore are interactive. As the name suggests, these books allow you to interact with the text and images for a more interesting learning experience. These books are also available for kids who can tap on different characters to play different sounds and to listen to audio narrations. Stay on the path and don't talk to strangers on the way. You'll also find things like coloring books where a child can use their finger to add color to images. All the books that I've demonstrated here were free from the Apple Bookstore. Another cool feature for kids is to set reading goals to encourage them to read more frequently. Open the Books app, select Reading Now from the menu, and scroll down the page. Here you can set your reading goal in minutes per day and use the link to open the current book that you're reading or listening to. You'll receive notifications each day when you reach your reading goal, which you can share with others. Finally, you can also hide books from your library. To do this, find the book you wish to hide, tap on the three dots ellipsis icon, and choose Remove, followed by Hide. Your book will disappear from your library. To get it back again, click on your Apple ID in the top right corner of the app, choose Manage Hidden Purchases, and after entering your Apple ID password, you'll have the option to unhide your book. So those are 10 tips for using the Apple Books app. If you found the video useful, I'd appreciate you giving me a like and hitting subscribe for lots more useful tips and tricks on all your Apple devices. And you might also be interested in learning an easy way to password protect files and folders on your Mac, or how about tips for getting the most out of the workout app on your Apple Watch. Until next time, my name is Anthony. Thank you very much for watching.